question is the question being now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. So the question is that part one stands part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question now is that part two and the stand part. So the debate is on clauses one to six and the schedule. Oh, six to twelve, sorry. <laughs> so, question. Ah, Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Chair. I was very disappointed that I didn't get to take a call on part one of this very important piece of legislation. Well, I look forward to Mr Peachy's contribution. He gave a very good contribution in the first reading of this bill, and I look forward to his contribution in the committee stage, because if he, if he, if he takes this legislation seriously, then he should be prepared to get on his pins and, 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 and contribute to this, particularly as chair of the select committee, when, of course, this part of uh, the process is, is to look at what the select committee did to challenge whether or not any changes truly needed to be made. And the select committee came back and said they didn't calm down. This is good here. It's called democracy. I know you may not like it, but the fact is that we need to go through. We need to go through this process. And part two, part two deals with the, the repeal of this act and the transfer of property and liabilities to the Wellington City Council. And it really must be put on record uh, the gratitude that this House has, um, both, uh, both for the donation of the Carter Observatory originally, but also for the Wellington City Council when they stepped in and basically provided a lifeline uh, for, for this national treasure. And we shouldn't be in any doubt that this has been something that the, that the, that the ratepayers of Wellington have had to pick up and uh, the rest of the country can feel very, very rightly pleased that they were prepared to do that. Uh, because if they hadn't, then we may have been in a position of not having a national observatory, but also not having an excellent resource for education uh, and an excellent resource for teaching and an excellent resource for the promotion of science in the Wellington area. And I myself have visited the Carter Observatory on, on many occasions and, uh, and have very much enjoyed it. And, and it, it's with a tinge of sadness that we say goodbye to our National Observatory, but we look forward to its future. Um, there are a number of processes that, they, that the Carter Observatory Board need to go through in order to transfer, this, uh, to transfer their assets and their liabilities across to the Wellington City Council. And it will be very interesting to see what comes out of that, the final report of the Board in particular, because the, the Carter Observatory has, has actually played a very extensive role in education in this country, far more than I think most members would actually be aware. They're NZQA accredited. Um, they've assisted to, to providing um, curriculum support for schools, uh, which in, given that we've, we've lost our science advisors um, in schools, even more critical that groups like the Carter Observatory are prepared to... Science advisors, Ms Collins. Well, what about science teachers? Why aren't they advisors? Well, I think that kind of sums up the attitude towards science in the National Party. Because in primary school, we have, primary school, we have relied on science advisors because not, most primary school teachers don't have a degree in science, Mrs Collins. Well, I'm, I'm responding to interjections, sir. I'm responding to interjections. And if Mrs Collins doesn't want me to go off track, then she shouldn't interject. Oh, we've got a point of order, sir. Point of order. Ask Mr Chair that you rule on relevance. I can't find it. I've looked for it. It's not in part two. Uh, yes, well, I was indicating to the member that they were straying outside. And just uh, the member should desist from responding to irrelevant interjections and contain herself to clauses 6 to 12 in part two and the schedules. Thank you, Mr Chair. Order. I, I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm enjoying this, this display of ignorance about science in our education system, Mr Chair. Mr Chair, it is important. In that final report, I hope that we will see, um, we will see, uh, uh, we will see some expansion or some explanation about that role that the Carter Observatory has been carried out and how they intend to continue to carry it out. Because with the loss of science advisors who advise our primary school teachers on the science curriculum, because primary school teachers don't have science degrees by and large, it's more important that groups like the Carter Observatory are able to come in. And I hope that when that final report is, is prepared and presented that we're able to get access to it. The report is, sub is submitted to the Minister, and I sincerely hope that if in that report 
they, the, the observatory have concerns about gaps that will need to be filled with the loss of a national observatory becoming a tourism and educational facility, uh, that the minister will be able to take that on board and the minister will be able to guarantee that there will be, that any gaps will be, will be plugged, minister, I guess is, is what I'm saying. And that's why that final report under clause 10 of this piece of legislation is so important. Um, it will be interesting also to see the board's activities and, and, and the, the areas that they've been involved in because, again, science tends to fly below the radar a little bit in this country and, and I think members, again, will be most interested to see the kind of areas that the Carter Observatory have been getting involved in and they are many, many and varied. They're a private tertiary provider, of course. Again, not a lot of people uh, know that but they should be acknowledged for the work that they've done in that area. And, and hopefully, again, with this transfer over, that won't be. Sue Kidgley. Uh, thank you.